This is Tony Brewer from the We Talk Truth Group, and you're listening to Cogitations. Cogitations is the podcast where we talk about things. We cogitate. We we turn them over in our mind. Um, the English word comes from Daniel chapter seven, verse twenty-eight. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. We are not going to keep the matter in our heart. Uh, we are going to talk about it. We're going to get it out in the open. We're going to discuss it. And that way it'll help us organize some of these chaotic thoughts we have running around in our heads. So if you'll notice, this is Cogitations episode 66. Uh, This is about self-defense part two. I had a wonderful conversation uh, with someone who asked some questions very honestly about the Cogitations episode from yesterday. And I appreciate this greatly. I love it whenever people give me feedback on the uh, episodes. For one, I, I can't, I can't, uh, like if I if I do an episode on something, I cannot uh, predict all of the questions that someone might ask. I, I try to preemptively answer questions that I feel uh, someone might ask, but um, it just doesn't. It, it, it doesn't work out all the time. I'm not. I'm not that good at it. Or I am. I'm pretty good at it. But I. I'm just. I'm human. I'm not. I'm not God. I can't figure out what's in the thoughts and in t- minds of, of people's hearts and what they're wanting to know. Um, we've got a good crowd in the live stream. Would you please share this? Invite your friends. Thank you so much for those who are uh, tuning in to this. If you're listening to this and you want to catch this live, and you want to. Um, participate in the live stream by all means uh go to the we talk truth group and and ask to join there in facebook or go to that of the church of christ x247 facebook page and like it and ask to get notifications for when we go live hold on, hold on just a second i gotta turn around and get my coffee ah it wasn't as far away as i thought um listen i'm i like my little my little thermos it's got we talk truth on it and uh, I made these decals up. Um, M- Mondays, Mondays, um, we talk truth podcast or a highlight to my week. I really like them. And if you want to listen to a long form podcast where three preachers discuss God's word or just discuss anything, really, um, go to wetalktruth.com and, and you will en- you'll enjoy that podcast. Hmm. Shadrach's Coffee. I wish I could get Shadrach's Coffee of Jonesboro to sponsor my podcast. Anyway, okay, let's 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 dive right into the um, the topic of the hour: uh, self defense. This is a this is a topic that is fraught with emotion, and and there are so many good people on both sides that are just trying to do what they feel like they're supposed to do. And I get pretty hated when we talk about this. And, and here, here's what gets me hated. Here are my trigger points with the self-defense topic. Whenever people who don't believe that a Christian should go armed start uh, signaling their virtue because – signaling their virtue in such a way as to say that they have more faith in God – than somebody who goes armed, that bothers me. That gets me heated, and and that uh that'll make me treat somebody not very nicely. Um, look, as I said yesterday, people who go armed do not trust any less in God than people who don't go armed. It's the same as locking my doors when I go on vacation. When I go on vacation or when I leave the house, I lock the doors. It's not because I don't trust in God. It's because I know the, the nature of people in the world, and, and, and doors keep honest people honest. Uh, if somebody was dishonest, if a, thief is, if, if a thief wants to target your home to rob it, you're going to be robbed. I mean, you, you, I mean, you would have to take some great measures not to have that happen. Uh, I suppose that there are some people who take those measures, and that's good. Um, I'm not impugning them. I'm just saying. And it's like uh, parking your car in in the mall parking lot. Uh, Do you trust in God any less because you lock your doors to your car? Well, obviously not. Um, I mean, if and again, the 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 door lock on a vehicle just keeps a just keeps a uh, an honest person honest. Um, just like I don't leave, if I have cash money, I don't leave it laying around. I, 
I hide it. And when I hide it, when I say I hide it, I mean I put it in my pocket. I put it somewhere where you can't see it just because it keeps honest people honest. It doesn't mean that I don't trust in God. With the self-defense thing, what bothers people is the statement, and this this people who walk around armed need to understand this. And I'm not saying that if you walk around armed that you don't understand this. I'm this is just a general statement. We need to make sure those of us who walk around armed need to make sure exactly the message that we are sending out when we walk around armed. We need to understand that we have had a conversation with ourselves in which that there is a situation that we would take another human being's life. If we don't if we've never had that conversation with ourselves, we don't need to walk around armed. We need to understand the gravity of the situation. Um, it would not it would not be a bad thing for uh, preachers and elderships across the country to have lessons on this, especially in today's social political cli- political climate in the United States. That whenever you walk around with a handgun uh, concealed, that you you are you are stating uh, whether you are declaring whether you realize it or not that you are willing to take another human being's life. Um, and, and we don't need to make that decision in the moment. I I talk to young people all the time and, uh, I tell them about making a decision to stay virtuous, making a decision to stay chaste and the, the, you don't need to make a decision on whether or not you're going to have sex before marriage while you're in the back seat of a, of a vehicle and y'all are groping one another because you're probably going to make the wrong decision. Um, if you haven't had the conversation with yourself and, and set your resolve to such that you understand the gravity of the situation when you carry a firearm, that you are willing to take another person's life, then you don't need to carry a firearm because when it comes down to the heat of the moment, you are not going to react in such a way you're going to hesitate and that'll get you killed, that'll get your loved ones killed. It's just not good. So just that's my little public service announcement. Um, but here's the questions that were asked. Um, what about Luke chapter six? And, um, listen to this verse 27, but I say unto you, this is Luke six twenty-seven. but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you and pray for them, which spitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer the other and to him that, um, taketh away thy cloak. Forbid not to take thy coat also. All right. So the question is, we know that the Bible is not contradictory in nature. In other words, if I read Luke eleven twenty one, where Jesus acknowledges the truth that when a strong man armed keepeth his, keepeth his palace, his goods are at peace. And when I read Luke 22, 35, 35 through 38, uh, where Jesus tells the disciples to go buy a sword. Um, when I explain that and I put that in its context and I see what that is teaching, and if for, for that lesson, go back to yesterday's podcast, um, then I know that Christians are authorized to carry a weapon. But how do I reconcile that in my own mind? How do I find the harmony in my own mind? You see, we don't have to harmonize Scripture. Scripture by its nature is in harmony. We don't have to reconcile two passages of scriptures because two passages passages of scripture by their nature are reconciled. There, there's no contradictions. So how do I, in my own mind, find the harmony in turn the other cheek and let somebody have my coat also if with go by a sword? All right. How do I do that? I mean, that's, that's good. That's an honest question. We need to answer that question. We don't need to just go over it. We don't, when I say go over it, we don't need to observe the Passover on it. We don't need to just ignore it. We don't need to say, well, whatever it's teaching there, we know what, what these verses teach so they won't contradict. Because that really puts people in a huge moral and ethical dilemma whenever they're trying to decide the the action they're going to take when it comes to the self defense of themselves the, when it comes to the defense of themselves and their families and and their goods for that matter so what is Luke chapter 6 teaching well first off let's go all the way back up to uh, oops i got to flip my page 
Let's go all the way back up to verse 20 when the paragraph starts, and let's, let's listen to this. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and shall cast out and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner, in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you, now listen to this. He says, Woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received, received your cons, uh, consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. And woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Now, here's the thing. Um, is, this, is Jesus speaking strictly literal? Well, he can't be. Or else, if you're rich, you're damned. You, if you're happy right now, you're damned. Uh, what else? If you're, um, if 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 you are esteemed among men right now, then you're damned. These are generalities. Okay, he's using figures of speech. He, he's speaking figuratively uh, in representation of people who are loved by the world, who trust in their riches, who um, are by probably by wicked means enjoying the fruits of this world, okay? But listen to verse 27. And incidentally, putting in this, putting this in its context, he's contrasting the leadership of the Jews which the, with the people who were standing there listening. Remember, this is, this is the parallel of the Sermon on the Mount, okay? All right, listen, listen to verse 17. We started at verse 20. I'm going to back up to verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him. And he healed them of their diseases and they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they that were healed and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. So these these dregs of society, the the weak and the oppressed, is who he's talking to, and he's saying, if you're he he basically describes the Pharisees or the leaders of the Jews when he says, "Woe unto you that are rich, you've received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep." They're laughing now, but when the kingdom comes in, the, in, in its spirit, they won't laugh. Um, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers the false prophets. So he, he's, he's really contrasting these dregs of society with the Jewish leadership. And he's saying, you people trust in your riches. You, you laugh and you, and you enjoy right now. You're full, but... It's not going to be well for you when it comes to the kingdom. It's not going to be well, all right? But I say unto you which hear, now those are the people that are there, okay? That's these dregs of society. Love your enemies. The Pharisees didn't do that. Do good to them that will hate you. The Pharisees didn't do that. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Nobody was cursing the Pharisees or despitefully using the Pharisees or the Jewish leadership. And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. The Pharisees, they weren't in a position of vulnerability. They didn't put themselves out there in such a way as they could be harmed. Okay? You see, this is not talking about self-defense. This is not talking about someone coming to rob you. This is talking about in your day-to-day with people, okay? And we need to understand that this is in the same vein of figurative language. How many times have you heard somebody uh, tell a 
uh, heard an exasperated parent tell a disobedient, rebellious child, I keep trying to help you and I keep putting myself out there for you or I keep putting my um, neck out for you and you keep chopping my head off. Well, are they really chopping their head off? Or what about this? I keep trying to open up to you and every time I try to stand up and, and help you, you hit me in the head and knock me back down. Okay, so that's a figure of speech. We understand that. So every time I try to help you, you slap my face. Every time I try to help you, you spit in my face. Well, that's metaphorical. That is metaphorical. Now, if somebody's really spitting in your face, you need to take care of that. Literally spitting in your face. If somebody's literally physically accosting you, then you need to take care of that. This is a figure of speech. And that word smiteth, that smites and keeps on smiting. That's, this is people who do it over and over again. The idea is open yourself up, be vulnerable, always have a willing heart. I remember a guy come to my house, uh, this is back 2012, 20, 2010, 11, somewhere along in there. And he knocked on the door and he said, man, I don't have enough money for gas. Uh, We lived about four miles from Hornbeak, Tennessee. He said, do you have any money I could borrow so I could go to Hornbeak and put gas in my vehicle? And of course, I I was, we were not well off at the time. And I had a $20 bill. That's all I had to my name. I just reached in my shirt pocket and I handed it to him. And it was said, well, don't you know that he probably didn't buy that with, he didn't buy gas with that. He probably went and bought beer. I'm like, yeah. Probably, but I gave him the money and I'll let the Lord handle the other part of it. You know, it's just, I decided to put myself out there. That's the thing. Yes, he slapped me in the face. Probably. I don't know. He may not have, but he probably slapped me in the face. He probably lied to me. He probably didn't do what uh, he said he was going to do. Well, that's what this is talking about. That's what this, this is not talking about. If somebody literally comes up to you and hits you in the face. In fact, that would be an actual crime, and that would be prosecutable. Okay, so look, look else. And him that taketh your coat or taketh thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Again, this is not people that are robbing you. This is, this is, um, this is a figure of speech. Like it, I give you an inch and you take a mile. Look, I've given you, I've given you the the shirt off my back and you want my pants too. Well, the idea is don't be weary in well-doing. Don't, don't stop loving your enemies. Don't stop doing good to those that hate you and would despitefully use you because you're, you're going to, you're going to need Christians are not jaded people. You don't need to make yourself so, um, so walled off and so impervious to, uh, impervious to um, being treated wrongly by outside people that you have walls up that you can't build love and connection. You, you've got to build connection with other people. That That's what this is talking about. So this, this isn't talking about self-defense. And uh, I don't think I've ever heard, I don't think I've ever heard it explained like that. I really don't. Um, so let's see, Here, here's, here's the next question that, that, uh, that was asked to me, uh, what about persecution? Can I still defend myself if I'm being persecuted? And, uh, the, the question was asked again. Now, these are very honest questions. I, I, I'm not, I'm not above doing an episode whenever, if somebody comes and, and tries to argue with me and it's dishonest, this is not that these questions were very honest. This exchange was very good and very respectful. Um, but the, but the question was asked, um, why don't we see people in the new Testament? Uh, why don't we see them? Um, why don't we have any records of people defending themselves in the new Testament? And of course my response was because there's no places recorded in the new Testament where, uh, defending yourself with a weapon would have done any good. You know, like take Stephen, for instance, he, he was, he was snatched up by a mob. It doesn't matter if he had a sword or not, he's going to die. Um, Paul was snatched up by the Roman authorities. Those were the police. Um, what else? Uh, other than that, we don't really have any, 
there's, that's just not what the Bible is about. The Bible gives us instructions on how to act and how to be and how to do, and we don't have to have an example associated with every commandment. Uh, just like we don't have have to have a commandment associated with every authoritative example. Um, when I say a commandment, an, an explicit commandment, um, it's an it's a, it may be a, a topic for another another um, another podcast. But anyway, so uh, what am, where am I? At? Yeah, so persecution. Can I still defend myself? If, if I'm being persecuted, I want to tell you, I've talked to people that take this position that if somebody comes to rob you and they're just robbing you because you've got something they want that you can defend yourself. But if somebody's coming to rob you and they don't like you because you're a Christian and they're doing it in the name of persecuting you for Christ's sake, then you are absolutely not allowed to defend yourself or your property. Folks, I don't buy into that at all. That, that, in fact, that even goes against the principle of God's parsimony. Um, notice, well, let's go to Luke, uh, Luke 22. Let's go to Luke 22. And I want to know, I want I want to show you something. Um, why were they given the swords? Luke 22, um, 30. Wait a second. I've written this down wrong. It's Luke, not Luke 22, 31. It's got to be. Uh oh. Have I done something else to prove to you that I'm not inspired? Hold on a second. You gotta love it when you write a when you write a scripture verse down. Sell your coat and buy a sword. Oh, Luke twenty two, not thirty one. Look, I was looking at the wrong one. It's Luke 22, 35 through 38. I got all panicky. So, verse 35, And he said unto them, When I sent you out without purse and scrip and shoes, you liked you anything? And they said, No, we didn't like anything, nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, so to the contrary, and this is sending them out on the, on the great commission, He that hath the purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, that's his possible's bag, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Verse 37, for, so because, why? Why do you need to take this stuff? Because I say unto you that this is, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors and the things concerning me have an end. And of course they said, behold, here are two swords. And Jesus said, it is enough. And I, I covered this yesterday. He's not talking about the quantity of the swords. He's talking about the type of the swords and whether or not they're adequate enough to the task. And they are. Same kind of sword that's talked about in Romans 13 about the sword of vengeance that the government wields. So this is the this is a, a battle sword. Um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah. So persecution. Notice they are to carry a sword and a script and money because they were going to be numbered with the transgressors. That means that people were going to come at them because they are Christians. Folks, I can defend myself. If you are going to take my life or property, even if you're doing it in the name of persecuting me for the cause of Christ, I am not going to lay down and let you kill me. I am not going to let you walk up to me and put your arms around my throat and choke me to death. I'm going to make you stop. And if I have to use extreme force and even take your life in order to get you to stop killing me, then that's what I'm going to do, all right? Because again, well, look at the look at the lesson from yesterday. I do not believe at all that the scriptures bear out that if someone comes and attacks us because they just evil and don't like people, that we can defend ourselves. But if someone comes and attacks us because we're Christians, we're supposed to lay down and let them kill us. That's not borne out anywhere in the Bible. And for us to say that is a twisting of God's word. All right. So again, um, can I still defend myself 
if I'm being persecuted for Christ's sake? The answer is yes, unequivocally. So that's the that's the questions that I was asked. Um, when in in lieu of what I taught yesterday, what about uh, being smitten on the cheek and somebody taking our coat and our cloak, and what about being persecuted? So anyway, um, if you have any questions, listen, uh, send them to me. Put them in the comment section. But do me a favor. Be as respectful as this as the fellow that asked these. Um, I'm not sure that I changed his mind about anything. I don't know. But he said he was going to go study. He said, you've given me some things to think about. That's all I ask. Um, the guy didn't come in. He didn't, he, as I've said before, he didn't ride in on his virtue signaling high horse. Uh, he didn't come in, uh, well, he just it, just, it was a good exchange. Um, it's a private exchange, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, but it. But it was good. And I don't mind people disagreeing with me. There are people that that are, are scrupulously opposed to carrying firearms, to carrying weapons. And, and that's, that's their right. That's their liberty in Christ. But what I don't want happening is people getting, is these same people getting on Facebook and twisting God's word and to make God's word say something that it doesn't say. Um, so listen, I appreciate it. There's some folks here in the comments uh, says, great lesson. I'm learning. Thank you so much for your explanation and kind of well said. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Uh, oh, oh, we got some regulars in. Good to see everybody. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. This has been a very well attended live stream. Maybe, maybe between eight and eight 30 is too early. Maybe I need to try to go for go, go at nine 30 or nine 45. Anyway, we live and learn who knows. Um, but this has been Tony Brewer with Cogitations. If you like what we do and you'd like to help us out, uh, www.podbean.com forward slash near churches. Go to uh, www.podbean.cogitations. Nope, nope, www.cogitations.podbean.com. And you can find our Podbean channel. You can also catch us on iTunes or Apple Podcast. And there's, well, I've... I, uh, I can't remember what it is right now. We're on a few separate different platforms. Just where, wherever you wherever you consume your content for podcasts, just search us out. Uh, thank you so much. Please share this material, share this stuff. And uh, when I get this podcast uploaded in a minute, uh, be sure and share it with your friends. Uh, God bless you. And uh, this is Tony Brewer with the with the um, with the um, uh oh. Uh, this is Tony Brewer with the uh, Cogitations Podcast, and I will see you on the flip side.